Hello everyone. Good morning and assalamu alaikum. It's my pleasure to greet you this morning after Eid holidays. Uh, how are you? Dear students, welcome to the Facebook live class once again on communicative English. Well, I believe that you are all safe in your home and uh, hope you are uh, enjoyed you have enjoyed bittersweet eat holidays anyway do you listen to me do you listen to my speech if not if not please uh, let me know okay uh, hope you are uh, listening to me uh, Thanks once again for uh, listening to my lecture and uh, watching my presentation. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, our lesson is not too heavy today because uh, you might not be in a good mood because uh, Corona has created uh, huge obstacles to celebrate uh, Eid holidays. So uh, uh, today you have no exercise to be done, simply listening and speaking, but uh, you have to do uh, some homework on writing tasks. By the way, uh, so far I guess uh, you were uh, watching first slide. Actually, it gets no chance. It has no chance. Simply uh, let greeting on it and uh, nothing else. Okay. Eid Mubarak to all of you. So we can go for the uh, next slide. All right, mm, lesson five, uh, as I said that uh, we have uh, finished uh, four lectures before, and now we are uh, at lecture five, and in today's lesson, we will focus on uh, knowing vocabulary or phrases related to introducing yourself and uh, practice listening uh, to an audio video and practice speaking uh, introduce yourself meaning that you have to introduce yourself uh, how you you can introduce yourself publicly okay uh, it's very important because of that uh, if you want to uh, go somewhere else uh, some, somewhere else uh, newly and in, if you meet uh, some new people then it needs to uh, introduce ourselves. So it is very important because of if we uh, fail to introduce uh, ourselves uh, rightly, that uh, uh, then uh, we might uh, lose attention to other people. So uh, uh, there is a saying that lovers love at first sight. So you have to uh, attract yourself in any gathering uh, at the uh, very beginning, right? Okay, writing task is mandatory, you know, uh, for homework. And uh, in every lesson, we used to do it. And ultimately, speaking is expected to be practiced among friends, teachers in a group, as I usually uh -huh. said uh, earlier uh, lessons. And it is our... Uh, common practice and daily practice so you have to do uh, it uh, because already I hope that you have created uh, some online group and you started uh, chatting or conversation with your friends okay mm, here is an important note for you 
viewers and students uh, you are uh, requested to use headphones while going to listen in, uh, to uh, audio or uh, video okay because uh, some audios uh, may have uh, low sound so uh, uh, while you go for listening to that very uh, very audio you need to have uh, headphones to uh, listen to the uh, um, uh, pronunciation of the native speaker uh, deeply and uh, so that you can engage uh, listening. Okay, um, go for the next slide. Listening. <clears throat> Okay, mm, mm, as I, it is our uh, common uh, practice that uh, we should remember uh, the, some rules of listening, uh, you see. And uh, uh, in last two classes, or last in my last two uh, lectures, I talked about the rules of listening. So I don't want to uh, uh, go about uh, talking about the rules of listening you just it is given here uh, for recapping okay so our today's uh, audio and video is about how to speak uh, fluently okay uh, you will be uh, given this slide is about uh, recapping the rules of listening and uh, already you came to learn in my previous lessons and uh, you just have a look, okay? And let's go for uh, listening to the audio. Okay, now before speaking, mm, we should uh, know some rules of speaking and uh, here is an audio and uh, you uh, try to catch the words of a native speaker how he is advising you and advising us to follow the rules of speaking this is very uh, simple and easy you see the first uh, don't study grammar too much okay okay dear students uh, don't be a mass to see the very word you uh, don't study grammar too much that does not mean that uh, you need not to go for learning grammar but uh, i hope that you have uh, studied grammar a lot as because uh, uh, we have uh, finished already 10 to 11 years studying grammar so no more grammar now it's time to apply it okay and then uh, learn and study phrases uh, new vocabulary of course, uh, you have to learn some new phrases. You have to increase uh, the strength of your vocabulary or phrases uh, so that it can make you confident while you go for a speaking about something, okay? And this is very important. Uh, number three, that is don't translate, okay? Actually, uh, for the Asian people, especially for the people of Bangladesh, it is uh, very, um, uh, very important to learn that uh, uh, we should not go translate, meaning that uh, this method, I mean the translation, uh, translating method is obsolete all over the world. But we the people, especially uh, the Bangladeshi people, usually do it first we try to uh, uh, translate in bengali then uh, we go for uh, speaking english so it is a wrong method uh, i mean a translation method is wrongly mentioned all over the world so you speak whatever you sense whatever you like okay right wrong doesn't matter if you go on practicing speaking then ultimately it will help you uh, to correct yourself while or after uh, finishing the space okay first time there may have some uh, mistake but uh, gradually 
uh, it will uh, help you to correct yourself okay then practice practice speaking practice speaking and practice speaking there is no other alternative of speaking so uh, let's go for enjoying the advice what the native speaker says right i hope that you will uh, enjoy the video and try to catch the words how uh, catch the main words important words and take notes what he is saying okay hi guys in this video i'm going to tell you four speaking rules you need to know the first one is to be on the phone which is quite strange to many ESL students but it is one of the most important rules if you want to pass the exam then go ahead and study grammar on the other hand if you want to become fluent in english try to learn english with the grammar Studying grammar will help you slow you down and confuse you. You will think that you are used when creating sentences instead of naturally saying the sentence like a native. Remember that for the small fraction of English speakers, more than the hand can be used to control the grammar rules. Many ESL students learn more grammar than native speakers. But the student cannot speak English, the reason is they always think about applying grammar rules before speaking. If you are not worried about grammar, you will speak faster. Level number two is learn and study phrases. Many students learn vocabulary and try to put many words together to create a proper sentence. But they cannot create a proper sentence. The reason is because they don't study phrases. When children learn a language, they learn both words and phrases together. Likewise, they need to study and learn phrases. The reason is they study phrases. When you want to create an English sentence, do not translate the words from your mother tongue. The order of words is probably completely different and will be both slow and incorrect by doing this. Instead, learn phrases and sentences you don't have to think about the words and the same it should be as well. The rule number four is practice speaking. Reading and listening is not enough. Practice speaking is what you do. Reading, listening and speaking are the most important aspects of any language. The same is true for English. However, speaking is the only requirement to be fluent. It is normal for babies and children to learn speaking for which become fluent that it starts reading than writing. So the natural order is listening, speaking, reading, then writing. The reason many people can read and listen is because that's called the practice. But in order to speak English fluently, you need to practice speaking. Don't stop at the listening portion. And when you study, don't just listen. <coughs> Speak a little bit until you are listening to and practice what you hear. Practice speaking out loud until your mouth and brain can do it without any effort. By doing so, you will be able to speak in this way too. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I hope that you have enjoyed the audio and video uh, from an expert uh, person, uh, from an expert native speaker. Now you can uh, go for the next slide. Okay, uh, this is our usual practice. Uh, you see, mm, preparation task before uh, entering into the lesson we should go for uh, warming up uh, therefore preparation task is simply a uh, warm up nothing serious here we can practice uh, uh, we can say brainstorming meaning that we are going to we are going for uh, having mindset to do the main text okay dear students do you remember our today's task 
that is mentioned in slide two, slide number two. I hope you do. That is uh, introducing yourself. So we came to learn how to uh, speak. We came to learn the rules of speaking. So our today's task is to introduce uh, yourself or ourselves, whatever it may be. So before going that, we should go for uh, you know, preparation task and uh, ultimately we will do here, okay? So uh, here you see, hello, uh, I am, you just say, you can say I'm Jahid Hassan and uh, I am from Bangladesh as because the country is mentioned here. Uh, and in later slides, you will learn uh, from another native speakers uh, how you can introduce yourself rightly, okay? Before going that, it's uh, uh, warming up, okay? So nothing serious here. The answer is flexible, it's up to you. So uh, I'm not, uh, I don't want to force you to do anything, it is up to you, okay? So there are uh, many family members, uh, there are uh, five family members of us in my family. There are five members of us in my family. And I live with my family. My birthday is on uh, 1st January, okay? I work for, uh, 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 I work for Dhaka Moila Polytechnic Institute as an instructor of English, you know? My hobby is uh, listening um, music, okay? I also like to watching movie when I'm free, I'm interested in gardening. I uh, I don't like, uh, or you may like, you may say like, or as it is mentioned, don't. So you, you say, I uh, don't like wasting time. My favorite day of the week is, uh, what should I say? Thursday because it is the weekend. Okay, my favorite month is December because in our country you say it uh, goes winter, and I love to uh, travel uh, in this uh, during this time. And uh, uh, I am married, or you may say single, or you may say engaged, or uh, if someone divorced, he can or she can say divorce, right? I uh, don't have uh, any children, or if I say, uh, uh, as I am talking about myself, so I have uh, two children, and I have got a beautiful pet, a beautiful pet, you say, or you see, simply you can say, I have a cute dog, or cat, or goldfish, or puppy, or mouse, or kitten, or rabbit, whatever it may be, it's up to you. As I said, that it is flexible. And uh, mm, uh, you have to talk about your character and personality a little bit. Uh, I am mm, flexible in my thinking or doing something. Okay, my best quality is my flexibility. Okay. Flexibility means that you are not reason in doing or listening or uh, making uh, in every task. That means you are uh, very um, easy, okay? My best friend name is blah, 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 okay? Steven or Ram or Rahim, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't have... Uh, any international friends or I have many international friends, it's up to you, it is flexible, right? I study English because I want to, uh, I want to keep myself updated uh, uh, because I have a lot of friends uh, uh, home and abroad. So if I want to get communicated with the a foreign friend, then of course it requires knowing English, okay? And uh, as I said, uh, that I study English uh, mm, 
since I was uh, studying, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, you see, uh, here is an uh, explanation. If you use uh, for, then it is uh, for unlimited time. If you use since, then of course you have to uh, use this sentence or you have to mention the time mm, exactly. So <clears throat> I have been learning English uh, since my early days uh, and I can express myself and communicate, communicate in English. Okay, that is all about the, uh, that is all about the introducing myself. So I see that time is getting up. So we have to finish earlier. So here I said that let's enjoy the video from Alicia uh, about how to introduce yourself and get ready to download the audio of your own to your Facebook account and let us know how charismatic you are to introduce yourself. So uh, let's enjoy the video from Alicia how she is introducing uh, herself. So it is very important for you that you have to practice of your own and you have to record the audio and of course as i said that uh, you have to publish it uh, for the public or your friends uh, where we want to see that how charismatic you are to introduce yourself okay so let's enjoy the video from alicia My name is Alicia and welcome back to Top Words. Today's topic is 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. So let's go. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You can only use this the first time that you meet someone. If you say this to somebody after you have met them already, you're going to seem either A, like you've completely forgotten meeting them, or B, like you are a very strange person for saying it's nice to meet you again. So when you use this the first time, you can shake hands with someone. Say, hello, it's nice to meet you. My name is, the next phrase is, my name is, blah, blah, blah. In my case, my name is Alicia. You can use this again when you're introducing yourself or if you need to reintroduce yourself, you can use this pattern. When you meet somebody at a party, for example, you can say, my name is, blah, blah, blah. My name is Barbara. My name is Stevens. You can shorten this. You can say, my names. My names, blah, blah, blah. I'm from, after you've said your name, after you've shaken hands, you can say, I'm from the US, I'm from Japan, I'm from Turkey, I'm from your mom's house, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from a cave in Southern Europe, I'm from your country, or I'm from your city, I'm from the future, <laughs> I have to go, I live in, I live in blah, 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 you can use your city, uh, you can use your country, you can use, even maybe if you live near a certain station, you can use the name of the station. So, for example, I live in America, it's fine. I live in Los Angeles, it's fine. I live in New York, it's fine. Uh, so, your neighborhood is fine. If someone says, where do you live? And you say, I live in an apartment. <laughs> what? Uh, so, please use your the region or the location where you live, not the type of place where you live. I'm a... If you hear the question, what do you do? It, it's asking about your job. In English, people don't say, what is your job? That's not the question that we ask. Instead, the question is, what do you do? And the correct response to that is, I'm a, or I'm an, blah, 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 followed by your job title. So if someone says, what do you do? You can say, I'm a teacher. What do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm a donut shop tester. I'm years old. When someone asks, how old are you? You can say, I'm blah, 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 years old. Don't forget the S at the end of this. If you like, you can shorten this phrase to just I'm plus your age. So I'm 65. <laughs> I'm 13. Whatever. I'm this many. Sometimes children will say that. How old are you? They'll say, I'm this many. So cute. First time you meet someone, you might not ask how old are you. If it's in a friendly case, like a, at a party after you've spoken to the person a little bit, it's okay. Um, but just try to be sensitive to the context. Try to be sensitive to the people around you. And if you sense that maybe there's a very large age gap between you, it might be better just not to ask the question at all. 
I enjoy. Many of my students say, what is your hobby? Um, but that's not something that native speakers will say. No native speakers say, what is your hobby? Instead, we ask, uh, what do you like to do? Or what do you do in your free time? This is a much more natural question than what's your hobby? The answer to this then is I enjoy or I like plus a noun phrase. So for example, what do you like to do? I like listening to music or I enjoy listening to music. What do you do in your free time? I like watching movies. What do you do in your free time? I like baking cakes. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy tap dancing. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy making new friends. Aww. One of my hobbies is, one of my hobbies is, blah, blah, blah. With this one, it's probably better to use a short, easily, or easy to understand hobby. If you're explaining a hobby, people are going to expect that it's going to be something that they know about, like photography or cooking or dancing or swimming or whatever. So try to pick something that will allow you to, to continue the conversation. That's why movies or cooking or books or, you know, sports are a good thing to share. I've been learning English for, if you are learning English, if you're studying English, you can use this expression. If someone asks you, how long have you been studying English, you can say, I've been studying English for a long time. Or I've been learning English, or I've been practicing English, or I've been speaking English for a certain amount of time. I've been studying English since elementary school is also okay to use. Uh, I've been studying English since I was in college. Just be careful. For is used for a length of time, and since is used for a specific point in time at which you started something. So you can try and mix it up when you're looking at different uh, expressions there. So, I've been learning English for... Okay. I'm still learning English. Yeah, you should do that too. Okay. I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com. This probably could be used in response to where did you learn English, or where are you studying English, or how are you studying English. You can respond with... I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com, or I'm learning English at uh, my school. I'm learning English at uh, my private teacher's house, for example. So a little bit of grammar in this sentence. Why do we use the progressive tense, I'm learning English? If you say, I'm learning, it sounds like you're still continuing your studies. If you say, I learned English at EnglishClass101.com, it sounds like you're finished. Uh, like you, you finished studying, there's nothing else for you to study, uh, so you're done. Um, so it's it's much, much more natural to actually use the progressive I'm learning or I'm studying uh, when you're talking about your studies, when you're talking about your hobbies, than it is to say I learned or I study. And, 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 uh, so those were 10 lines that... Okay, dear students, uh, I hope that you have uh, experienced the uh, uh, international teacher, Alicia, uh, who is uh, teaching English worldwide. Uh, so, uh, time is up. So, uh, uh, you see, uh, at the end of the lesson, we uh, came to learn how new vocabularies we have learned from this lesson. So, I think that uh, we learned some new vocabularies that is creative, hardworking, rude, stingy, insensitive, calm, and unreliable. Uh, you have to uh, uh, write, you have to make sentences with this uh, for uh, with these words new words so that you can um, understand well okay and ultimately um, you have some uh, points uh, to uh, discuss among your friends that is how did you enjoy the eat day and you can uh, talk about this topic so we can go for the next slide uh, that is uh, homework you see you have to summarize today's lesson learned within 10 sentences for uh, from the beginning to the end, and uh, you have to submit it to your uh, respective teachers. And let's let's finish our lesson just listening to a song, uh, praying to the Almighty, and uh, hope to hope to see you uh, next class. Okay, so let's enjoy the song. Okay. Lord, I'm calling, I need your help, I don't want to fight no more, I don't want to fight this war, oh na na, oh na na, oh na na na, 
I don't want to fight no more. I don't want to fight this war. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na. Yeah. Okay, we have enjoyed a song. Uh, now, you, uh, your task is to write the first four lines on your comments box. Okay. Uh, as I uh, used to say every class that if you want to keep watching this video, uh, get connected with this uh, website that is www.skills.gov.bd. Okay. All right. Uh, we are at the end of the session. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for watching my lecture and staying with me uh, with patience. Okay. And uh, hope to see you next. Thank you so much.